what does the science say around change that's forced on us versus change that we actually have some agency in? The science says that once that change is made, the body really doesn't differentiate too much. And this is true for positive and negative changes too. So um, something as joyful as getting married can lead to just as much like allostatic load or change stress as getting divorced. Um, so to the body, change is just change. Now, that's not to say that all changes are created equal. Getting into a tragic accident, um, suffering capital T trauma, that's a lot worse and a lot harder to reconcile with than a more minor change like you know breaking a bone or getting the flu. Um, but I think that's a good point because people assume that like, oh, well, you know, this was a voluntary change and it was positive, so therefore it'll be easy, but that still disrupts stability. Um, the research shows that the average adult experiences over 35 major life changes. Um, now, all those aren't negative. Many of those are positive, but it's a lot of change. And with that change, there's a few ways that the book is broken down. I want to start first with mindset because some of these situations change is completely unexpected. But if you're working on your mindset and anticipating that there's going to be 35 major changes in my life, I'm going to be able to handle <laughs> and embrace this change in a much better way. So what do we look at from a mindset perspective now knowing that data that there's likely to be on average 35 of these major changes, especially for those younger listeners who are like, well, I haven't had that many changes yet. There's still 30 on the horizon. So I think the two biggest prongs here are uh, acceptance. So we have to accept that change is inherent to life and that we're going to face it and that it might be hard at times. And then also to set appropriate expectations. So to expect change and to update our expectations when things go differently than we thought they would. The first tool that I'll share comes from one of my favorite intellectual thinkers of all time, Eric Fromm, who was a humanist philosopher and psychoanalyst in the 1900s. And in 1976, he wrote this book called To Have or To Be. And he talked about having is identifying with things that you own. And those can be objects, those can be relationships, those can even be attributes, like I own a great jump shot or I own a good bench press. Whereas being is identifying based on some more deeper essential core attributes of what make you who you are. So things like creativity, love, compassion, kindness. And Fromm argues that having makes you really fragile because all of these things at some point are going to change. And when they change, you won't know who you are. Whereas if we can orient around our being, around these essential values that make us who they are, those can't be taken away. Even throughout change, we can still lean on them. So I think part and parcel of accepting change is to try to get out of this having orientation and to adopt a more being orientation toward ourselves. So when you define yourself, it's less, you know, I am a writer, I am a dad, I am an athlete, and it's more I'm a caring person. I value creativity. I value intellect. And then the second important thing around updating expectations is this equation that um, has kind of become cliche, but it's based on years of science, which is your mood at any given time is a function of your reality minus your expectations. So if your expectations are better than your reality, your mood is going to be negative. And how this relates to change is that oftentimes we're going along life and we're expecting X to happen, and then Y happens. And the longer it takes us to update our view of reality and to update our expectations, the more we suffer and the less happy we are. So really important to both accept change, expect it's going to happen, and then when it does, update our thinking. 